Oh my word. Look at this. Can you even see? Can you even see all the hair I just pulled out of my head? I have to vacuum that up. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Child of Glass. Child of Glass is a 1978 wonderful older Disney television release. It's directed by John Ehrman, cinematography by William Cronjager, editing by Lloyd L. Richardson, the music's by George Dunning, and it's written by Jim Loris based off a book called The Ghost That Belonged to Me by Richard Peck. John Ehrman is best known for The Blackwater Lightship, Making It, Roots, and The Outer Limits. William Cronjager is best known for The Hustler, Hill Street Blues, Vigilante Force, and McCloud. Lloyd L. Richardson is known all for his Disney work. He literally has worked on everything Disney, Alice in Wonderland, like literally all Disney. George Dunning is best known for From Here to Eternity, Starman, Picnic, and The Man with Bogart's Face. Jim Lawrence is best known for The Atonement, Missing Children of Mother's Story, and this. The film stars Steve Shaw, Katie Kurtzman, and Olivia Barish. Steve Shaw plays Alexander and he's best known for Knott's Landing, Centennial, The Waltons, and Emergency. Katie Kurtzman plays Blossom and she's best known for The New Adventures of Heidi, Dynasty, and Little House on the Prairie. Olivia Barish plays Inez and she's best known for Rebo Man, Fame, The Doors, and Charlie's Angels. Child of Glass is about a boy named Alexander and his friend Blossom helping a ghost child Inez cross over. They filmed on location in Kentucky and Louisiana and they had to build a fake mausoleum in a cemetery and that mausoleum became kind of a local attraction after they finished filming. The gum chewer Violet from Willy Wonka is in this movie. In case the suspense is killing you, I loved this movie. Oh my word. The cinematography was incredible. I have a clip. I loved that piece of cinematography but I loved almost all of the cinematography in this film. I mean, I loved the cinematography, not almost all. I loved all of it because it was fantastic. The lighting, the ghost effects, the following, the POV handheld shots, like it was so good. That aside, the story was incredible. Wow. There have been a lot of alcoholic characters in Disney films recently, and I find it fascinating because I'm wondering if there are people at the Disney studios making films during this time that resonate with alcoholism or have people in their lives that are alcoholics and this is their way of channeling or coping with that. I think it's very interesting. And there were alcoholics or drunks before, but not as often and not as extreme like it was always just some side character or it was a joke or something you know it's not like they're the villain or there's some character no one likes or you know because i remember you know follow me boys kurt russell's dad was a drunk but it wasn't you know he's an evil guy per se it was just he was having a hard time raising his son because he was an alcoholic and then i remember in those Callaways. He, I guess, was an alcoholic. They uh, kind of said it. And she, Vera Miles' character was all, you know, you gotta give up the bottle. And he did. But just, that was far and few between. And now I just feel like it's alcoholic in this film. Alcoholic in this film. Some kind of alcoholic character. And I think that's interesting. And I would notice, because I'm very sensitive to alcoholism because it runs in my family. So I just... I think it's interesting that there's all of a sudden an upsurge of alcoholic characters in Disney films, and I wonder what the correlation is. For this next note to make sense, I kind of have to explain to you what a lavalier microphone is. Lav is what they're just referred to as. So a lav microphone is what the actor wears to pick up their dialogue and their movements, etc. So often what happens is the sound guy will put the battery pack of the lav mic in the back pocket or in the back of their pants, however they're gonna put it, on the back bra for some females, and they run the wire up into the middle of the chest so it gets the voice very clearly and beautifully. And a lot of the time, you can't see these. That's the whole point. You're not supposed to realize that they're wearing a lavalier microphone. For men, sometimes they'll go into the collar because you can't see it, or you know, if they're wearing an undershirt, even better, etc. It's called a lav microphone. It's what picks up their audio. They'll move the battery pack depending on the shot so you don't see it. I digress. Well, <laughs> there are a few scenes in this movie where Steve Shaw, Alexander, is wearing a baseball tee with obviously no undershirt and you can see so clearly his lavalier microphone mic on his chest and when he turns around you can kind of see it like in his pants but they hide that a little bit better but you can see the mic on his chest in that baseball tee. And I, I've never seen the microphone. Like watching a movie, all of these Disney movies, 
quite a few times I've seen the battery pack in the back or you know I've seen where it might be hidden on the person but I have never seen the microphone and I saw the microphone and its wire on <laughs> on Alexander's character, which I thought was insane. So that was uh, really unfortunate for them because it definitely took me out of the story. I was very distracted by the fact that he was obviously wearing his laugh and that I could see it. It took me out of the story, but some person who doesn't know what a laugh mic is might not even notice or they'll just sit there and go, what is that? <laughs> there you go. Guys, I cried more than once. It was so good. The first time I got very, very teary. A tear didn't technically fall, but it was pretty much there, was when Blossom was watching Alexander dance with Inez. Oh my gosh, I called that from a mile away. I knew it was going to happen as that party kept getting closer, and I was a mess. I felt so bad for Blossom, my whole heart was shattered into pieces. And then I cried when the whole family thought Alexander was dead, like he died in the fire. The mother's performance was incredible. Everyone, every piece, every family member's performance was incredible during that scene. And then pulling him up out of the well, Blossom and him, that was incredible. I was just, basically the fire in the barn started and I was just a crying mess. And then like, he gets better and he wants to go save Inez, so. Then I'm not really crying. I'm not crying when he like saves Inez and everything. It was very sweet and very good, but oh, the dancing scene and then from the barn on fire to like he goes to the graveyard, I was a crying mess. It was so good, you guys. I highly, highly recommend this movie. That's all I have for this movie because it was incredible. You guys, I cried. I adored this movie. I think Steve Shaw and Katie Kurtzman killed the game. They were so good in this movie. I highly recommend. I adored them. I had to buy it, which I am so happy about now because now I own this movie and I can watch it whenever I want because it was so good. I had to purchase this. I don't think it's available anywhere to rent. At least I couldn't find it. So I had to buy it and this is probably the happiest I've been with a purchase that I've had to buy and now own. My least favorite being The Boy Who Flew With Foundors. <laughs> Um, definitely, definitely watch this movie, you guys. It was so, so good. Our total movie count is, our cry count is. <laughs> Parents, that's totally still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put out videos every Monday and Friday. Until next time, comment, like, and subscribe. But I'm not charged life, you are, so you do you. And don't be Timmins about it. <laughs> I also want to remind you that on Wednesday, I asked for questions for the Q&A video that's coming out in August during the celebration. So please, please, please ask me questions. You can ask them in the comments of that video. You can ask them in the comments of this video. You can ask them in the comments of any video. You can ask me questions on Twitter. You can ask me questions on Instagram. Anywhere you want to ask me a question, please do it because I really, really, really want to answer a lot of questions for the Q&A video and I'm trying to give you guys a lot of time to ask me them. So please, please, please ask me some questions for the Q&A video. I'm really, really looking forward to doing it for you guys. Thanks! Child of Glass is so good! Hey! Mm. Uh, I'm sick. <coughs> Boo.